Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Let's Play. We're back at it with the letter. This is part three now? Yeah, part three. We're about to start the open house, if I remember correctly. We were attacked in our last session. Also, there's a lot of stuff, but that's besides the point. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nine in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors, compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glittering in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy, fancy feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpies living nearby like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. There are murmuring amongst themselves, looking at the estate, faded, uh, crazy, facade appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has the uh, superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabel Santos. We will be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up are signed in form before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I will be guiding those who want to wish to see the ground floor. I do like the music. The music has definitely picked up. Hearing this, a few uh, wonder to me. They are mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Oh, I now know who Luke is and why I hate him. Miss Cullen also joins our group, but what really catches my eye is the elegant dressed pair she uh, she approaches. So nice to finally meet you, uh, Chief Inspector. Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town. I knew I had to get you. Your confidence in my skill is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you don't you won't disappoint. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about, um, Marianne on our way here, darling. Oh, yes, I think I did. Ah, they must be the client she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before, some magazine or on the, or on the television? Can't quite remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news, one way or another. I won't be surprised if uh, those two already have. For people who are popular, though, they, are, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others. Yeah, they seemed almost like, you know, murdered. Like, I don't trust them. I don't know. It's too clean. I remember watching a video on Get Out where, like, a character that is just too clean seems almost creepy-like. Loudly as the others in their uh, simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman, in particular, is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. As if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I'd think they're brother and sister if it weren't for their public displays of affection. I was going to say that it seems very much a little questionable. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Whatever, couple or not, what's important is that we get this deal closed before the current owner can even think of canceling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave enough and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. Journal updated. When there aren't whisperings among themselves or going Ooh, and ah, over one thing or another. They ask questions from how the how the renovation process went to the history of the place. I am all more than happy to talk about the art pieces in the architecture mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legends. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxembourg knows about it. Some of the furnishing here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have gone undergone a painstaking uh, restoration process just to return it its original beauty. Even the glass, thing, colorful ones, oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the, fian the fiancé 
of the Lady Charlotte. By the f yeah, fiance of Lady Charlotte. The mansion current owner has specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I stop talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We'd have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it's just right. Don't you think, Miss Mary... Or Mary Ann? It is splendid, ma'am. But isn't it a bit too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It, it isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want to change before we move in. Do they plan on just, like, suing us? To just take the house? The rest of, of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please let these guys buy the one, be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Oh. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put into uh, retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room, in particular, looks amazingly like the one I've only seen in fantasy books. And mad props to the cleaning crew, seriously. After overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tar staining the bricks, and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they still managed to pull it off. Or make it presentable, at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath the hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar? This is the first time the guy in grey speaks up. Mr. Luke. Right. My memory supplies from the, former they signed er from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard since the start of the tour only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in this place. But this time, something lights up in his eyes at the mo mention of the underground, the undercoft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes, but right now, he just gives me an impression of a child who has seen what is absolutely, who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way, my younger siblings especially. And a grown man, it's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could have around 700 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Holy shit! Seven. It could have around 7,000 to 11,000. Thousand bottles of wine whole truly in the room. How is it built? The brick the bricks that were used to uh, build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving its consent temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection and if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition? Oh love, didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough. If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Emerge Mansion sits on 46 acres lot. That's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before that, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face. But he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he has started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand what these people's, how these people's mind works, but I'm sure hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! Can't wait to tell Rose. And the rest of the tour, tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an, hour, half an hour, we're about to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny. The first time BRC had us survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose about how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is my excitement over a possible sale. Oh fuck. I don't like- no. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts off as a small goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ears and shadows dancing lurking, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I look, take a look. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel a s feel sick. And I start to break in a cold sweat. I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyways. If I can just- Excuse me, everyone. We- We're taking a 15 minute rest here before we sit- Uh, visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourself with refreshments and snacks we've prepared. 
If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them f sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I've probably just caught breakfast cold. Don't think about it. I've left, al I've left alone for a good while. The same words spilling up my lips in a silent prayer until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, hello you there? I yes, ma'am. Oh, look at you. Having a show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, man. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyways, Isabel, right? Isabel, ac Isabella, actually. But, yes. What can I help you with, ma'am? Right. Ma'am, right? Please, just Hannah. Call me Hannah. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plagued me is suddenly gone, replaced by an utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She let me expectantly as I shrugged to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, you see, uh, we haven't even investigated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. It still would be great and all, but she stopped me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she tasted a particular sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And just between me and you, and just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady. We'll probably just fill it up with cats. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am. Ma'am Hannah. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already, ma'am? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Preach. Preach. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. And it would be so wonderful we could secure its purchase for us. Why, I can I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. Well, actually, we actually have a procedure for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appreciated. And just with, and just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here, leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk to ourselves? What would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if we could help me with a uh, paperwork. Try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. Aggressive much? I can't help but uh, send an imploring look at Miss... Uh, a Miss McCollin. Who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Ah, yes. I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the paper from my hands and stuffing them through her bunch. And uh, shuffling through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd love to talk to you about those, uh, those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name. Isabel. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'd be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors too. And what's this? A look in confusion and disgust appears on her face, turning her head and merely shrugs in reply. That's an, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry, darling. Buttercup. Art. This is a complete overstatement for this garbage. It looks like a cheap prop for a D-list horror film. Shush, love. The girl will do what she pleases with a... What do you call this? I forget about it. At the very least, it's not dreadful at, as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm... Um, Sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your taste. None of this chain letters sort of thing. It has to, to it has to always work with a palette. I'm not quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this form. It's my turn to be bizarre. What do they mean? Rose and I double checked everything. Are are the papers I handed them not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't, I don't want to mess this up. But with the way Ma'am Hannah leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what'll happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place looks once she's done with it. You don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I'll still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyways, as I was saying. I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip and my breath grows labored. Isabel, Isabel, are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose Group joined us in the parlor. 
I want nothing more than say no, I'm not alright. I don't want to leave this place, but I remember everything as clear as day. The letter and the woman in the attic. It's real. The letter. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. How would I even tell them what without looking like I've gone mad? This question alone will decide a lot. I can feel it. This is a very important question. Because if I show Rose the letter, I will seem crazy. And that is the logical choice I should do. I should show Rose the letter. And get out of here. Because eventually I feel like I'm going to be able to play through all the characters. So this is very similar to Until Dawn, which is I have a feeling I can kill off characters. Some characters will die. And different endings occurring. So... If I show Rose a letter, my character will go into like a frantic escapade and Rose will take me home. Me as Isabel will live. Isabella will live. But that leads to more questions. If I don't, there's a higher chance that I right now die. A lot is also riding. <sighs> also, not showing the letter gives me that. Oh, but there's so many. Because like not showing the letter may make like Luke. Because I would. <sighs> I have to show her the letter. I have to. I have to. How does that change? That lowers my relationship with Marina. Really. That's unfortunate. I blurted out before I could think twice about what I was going to say. Rose, we need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Rose cast a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in their conversation with their peers. Those curious enough to turn their heads in our group's direction have been given her trademark saleswoman smile. A tight expression on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've been, already had this conversation about this weeks ago. There are just stories... I, and I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something here. It's not It's not human at all. There was just nothing, but this letter is proof enough. She gently reaches out and plucks the paper out of my hand. Without even get, uh, taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Look. That's four, by the way. Said to show to five people. I've shown it to four. That's four people. I didn't even think about that. Fuck. I don't know. If, Cause then it's like, you know, the creepy policies on the internet, like send this to five people or you get haunted tonight. It's an infinite virus and I've just spread it to multiple people. I didn't have the choice for those three, but I had a choice about Rose. I may have just killed Rose. I'm really worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. No, no, you don't understand. This isn't a condition, Rose. No concussion at all. I'm fine. But this place isn't. Are you being stubborn about it? Before Rose could open her mouth for a retort, a hand landed on both her shoulders, pulling the two of us a distance closer. Now, now, ladies. What seems to be the problem here? Uh, that, that just gave me... Yeah. 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 I don't like him. I just had to clarify a few things here with my college. Well, certainly seems intense. A smile fits the two of you before in my better in my opinion. Especially uh, darling little Lily here. He gives me a shoulder a gentle squeeze. Well uh Ernan's uh scruto scrutable smile spreads across his face. Eh. Eh. Oh my god, this guy. It's Is Isabella's here. Of course, of course, but my point will stand. With two beautiful ladies here, I'm sure. And I'm sure little Lily here would uh, certainly appreciate it if you removed your pretty hands from her, darling. The pressure on my shoulder lifts. Ugh. Both of them. Lifts as soon as those words leaves his wife's lips, while the scowl on her face is still splashed of cold water on me. It's also possible that Miss... Miss this, uh, pleasured frown on Miss Collins' face. The realization that we might lose the sale because of my outburst instantly dawns on me. Rose will be beyond piss. 
I... I think I need to step up for a while. I'll be back. Bow my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather myself and make a quick exit. Doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not, I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving on be behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait. The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler. Eyes soften, a fond smile spreads on her lip. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on, you didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't run into any problem before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And look. She hesitates, completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down at her hand, a small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid letter again. My hand stiffens when she gives it back. When I take it, nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. But I have this nagging feeling that one way or another, it finds its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You have to let me them know about... I knew you want us to get this sale so badly. Well, we've made a lot of plans on how to get go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think, look, here's the thing, Isabel. If we are going to do this, work on something, I don't know, this big, I need you in top shape. And the way you are now, my mind stops. What? Wait, no, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body, and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're, you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly couldn't you, could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She claps her hands together in front of me, her eyes pleading for understanding, and I do understand, to some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn the situation had taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happened after all. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little. Yeah. Obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want to uh, repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob. And I didn't even know what that means. <laughs> As the memories... At the memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning a strange look from guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps had happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? Still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out for this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted by this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside for some a while and wait for you to wrap things up. Please just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid rose you clearly have not seen how you looked earlier it's not that bad color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet just stay here all right don't even think about going anywhere let me finish what i'm doing here then i'll take you back to the luxembourg i'll take you back to luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked at least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you okay she's gone before i even voice one word of complaint do -do 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 Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying this afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass window. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderlies gathered some of, some ways across from me is occupying in a friendly banter about which one would, uh, would cost more to buy. A little argument here and occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon hangout will help. Oh yeah, I forgot I had that hangout to go to. Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's been a few hours earlier from what I've told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the latter personal uh, convections and all. Honestly... 
there's something I find admirable in him. Despite his tendencies to annoy the hell out of me, it's that, well, whatever way works, a free ride is still a ride. There's Rose offer too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without my assistance. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers asking for a decent signal letter to call. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. I was not expecting that. What? Shit. How long does this even think? Sharp ring fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that has settled soon enough. Heading begin to turn to searching for the source mine, including my eyes dirt around the room for a crowd before zeroing in a long figure. Crouched behind the same group of old ladies checking out at the decor's moment to go. He's facing away from me, falling with something in his hand. But I don't need to see his face to know who he is back then. Oh, I reckon is that dumb park anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I love the pretty fly for an Asian guy. I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Oh, of all times, too. Ashen Frey. Yo, I love. Yo, I want that jacket. Holy fuck, he drip as fuck. Ashen Fry. What happened next is something I'll surely regret later for having not recorded. <gasps> he jumped, let an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping out of his grip. It bounced from one hand to another. It is poorly attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding clack. Kind of feel sorry for the phone and the floor, but it's not every day that you can catch them like Ash off guard and got a, re a reaction. Damn his stupid detec detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! An awkward pause passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> Cough. He makes a face. And then, in a top, in a too quick motion, he ducks, retrieves his, his abused gadget, while a grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eye when he, uh... He strains, but a flush has crept to his neck and cheek. Another universe where we haven't known each other for five years and sh suffering through his, uh, his teasing is in a day-to-day -day occurrence. Chances are, I'd, f I'd find that adorable, endearing even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of a world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collective disposure. disposure. Hello to you too, scaredy cat. I could, st I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? I missed that look on your face? No way. Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself. You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary. Suddenly, checking every nook and cranny in his phone for some for any damage or scratches seemed to be more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash? I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Do you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ash, and I'm not in the mood. What are you doing here? He chances a glimpse at some, at some point between me. The parlor. Curious, I followed his gaze. Before I could figure out what he caught his attention, he placed a hand on my shoulder and turned back to face me. I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. I still don't see how he, his work has anything to do with why he's here. On my confused look, he dropped his hands resting on my arm like he had touched something particularly hot and casually rubbed the back of his neck. Uh, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Free time and all. So here I am. Figured you'd still be busy and all, so I roamed here for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client. We have a mandatory sign-in sheet for clients, Ash, and didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normally, people actually follow an etiquette here. Right. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and... No, wait. That wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said, never mind. I was just about to leave anyways. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gave me a long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how 
easy reading people is for Ash, given how he often looks as if everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and he won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on Earth I'll ever think about telling it to, if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he's has helped me even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts in the supernatural? He'll never believe those even if he hears it from a friend. Except maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you an uh, explanation why those things have no chance of being ever being real. At worst, he's insufferable. He'll peel, poke fun of you at every single chance he'll get. Ash hole. What did I even do to him? He, he never does that to Becker or Zack. I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope. Over my dead body. Before he catches his attention, I shove the letter deep in my onto my bag into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Let's just go. Doesn't look like nothing to me. We'll still have Zack's movie tonight. Remember? I still early. They didn't even say shift will end at around 5 or 6. What about... Hey, Isabel, wait up. And we rush out. Thank you all so much for watching this episode, because I'm calling it here. If you guys did enjoy this one, enjoy the, just the storytelling and the uh, the atmosphere in this world building that we're getting here, consider leaving a like and subscribing. If there's any games you'd like to see me play in the future, any at all, leave them down in the comments below. I'll check them out in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. See you guys in the next episode.